Hi everyone, it's me again. I hope this episode finds all of you well and healthy and enjoying the beginning of spring into summer. It's really great here in California. Um, I wanted to tell you that I'm doing really well and that we would like to do an episode probably every other week so that um, I can uh, really gear up to be as enthusiastic as I am uh, and also so that we can do our research and really really give you a wonderful episode. So um, looking forward to sharing information with you and inventory with you and uh, we're going to get started. I've actually had some really good shopping experiences in the past three weeks and um, it's a cross-section literally across the board from the teens through the 90s and so Mike made a selection of things uh, that look interesting, are interesting and should also be available on the website. So I'm going to start with the pieces on the table and we have to begin with uh, we have a pair of Fendi mules that are wool, like a wool tapestry, and beaded. Fendi exploded in the 90s with their baguette. And this uh, pair of shoes is something that would have gone with a baguette, because I've actually seen uh, ones that are similar in design. This has almost uh, a Kaleem uh, carpet feel to it. And then um, above it are a pair of lucite clip earrings with chrome, and then this wonderful mushroom, which is from the French designer Fabrice. The uh, chrome earrings are probably from the late 60s, early 70s, and you can think of, we have two versions, the orange and the red. And the Fabrice mushroom, highly desirable and beautiful quality. Um, and then continuing on with the jewelry, I guess you'd call that a dangly earring. It's a matte gold with pearls. The pearls are a la Miriam Haskell. And when you wear a, a pair of earrings like that, they are clip. It really makes your, your neck look long. And uh, it can be extremely flattering. Of course, if your neck is short, it's not a pair that you would want to wear. And then on this piece, on this uh, form, it's a Miriam Haskell necklace. And I'm very happy to have this Haskell necklace because if you remember back in May we got looted and one of the things they took was our Haskell showcase. So this is actually one of the first pieces of Haskell we've gotten back into the store. It's unusual. It has the uh, Haskell cartouche on the back and also on the chain. Uh, so it's not a, two pieces that were married together at a different time uh, by a different designer. And uh, it's wonderful because it's a pendant necklace, and that seems to be something that appeals to people a lot of the time. Um, on this neck form, we have um, a wonderful charm necklace by Anne Klein, more than likely from the 90s. And it has, um, it's reminiscent of Chanel and her belts with the uh, charms. Um, and then on this neck piece, Interesting that this cross does not have a uh, signature to it because it's beautifully made. It has, um, it's a Maltese cross. It has rhinestones as well as the uh, glass amethyst cabochons. And there is no maker even on the chain. So I don't know who made that, but it's, it's a wonderful statement piece. And purple's my favorite color. And then on top of this is a very rare pair of Kazal sunglasses. It's a faux tortoiseshell, not completely surrounding the actual eyeglass. And uh, I don't know the date of it, but it is, um, it's unusual. I mean, in my uh, 40 plus years in the industry, I've never seen a pair like this before. We go to the Gucci loafers, iconic with the logo. Um, these are probably 1990s, and the amazing thing is it looks like it was only worn once. Perfect condition, size 9B. Oftentimes when we find shoes, they're either distressed and worn or they're itsy-bitsy sizes and narrow widths. So uh, we actually got 
a wonderful selection of, sh uh, of designer shoes, some of which we don't have in the store yet, but um, these Chanel boots are part of them, part of the stash that I got recently. These are a nine and a half, never worn, and uh, chunky heel. So um, anybody that's looking for a great pair of unworn Chanel boots, we have a few. These are also unworn Chanel boots, and these are a size eight and a half, uh, dark chocolate brown zip on the inside. The other ones are actually slip-ins. So this has a tight an ankle um, perimeter. I believe the Chanel boots are in the early 2000s, early to mid 2000s. So um, that covers the items. Oh, and I forgot this Lucite fruit pin which is painted on the reverse. A lot of the fruit items like necklaces and bracelets and earrings are highly coveted and very collectible. So I was happy to get that one. It's not also not a small piece. It's a really strong statement piece. Then on the mannequins, we have some of our older pieces. We actually have um, a piece that's a little bit older. So I'll pull that one out first. This piece is from the teens, early 20s, and it's in really beautiful condition. It's a silk chiffon with hand embroidery and some bullion thread detailing as well. And the detailing actually goes all the way down towards the hem. It's a normal human size. And, you know, one of the things I love to look at is not only condition and quality of materials used, but I also love to look at the detailing. Like this, for example, has bound buttonholes. And you know when the time is taken to do that. It's not an easy task to do that, that you're dealing with something that has quality. I was told at the time that I purchased this that it belonged to royalty. And I can tell you that this neckline area is probably missing something. Um, but I can camouflage that if need be. Um, also, the Peter Sham, which is the inner belt that's usually grosgrain ribbon, um, is a new replacement. But other than that, everything on this is original, and it has all its original buttons, which kind of blows me away. The back is just as lovely with the embroidery. No perspiration stains, no rot. It's a remarkable piece of Survivor over 100 years old. And then the next oldest piece we have is this unique 1930s, I would say probably 1933-ish. Um, it's a very hardy lace that was originally an ivory color, and I rarely see lace that's been uh, stencil print. So the, the black is um, an afterthought. And it really creates a nice dimension and drama. This has its original belt, which is also remarkable after, what, almost uh, 90 years. And this beautiful rhinestone closure at the neckline. Piping is bias cut um, around the cleavage. And um, it's, it's a slight um, I think it's a partial bias cut, so there you go. It has a slip so that you're not um, exposing yourself. <laughs> you know, when I started in the business in 1981, it was really easy to find rayon crepe printed dresses, typically with draping or peplums. And I remember there was a store on Polk Street near Sutter that specialized in these gorgeous dresses. Nowadays, they're really hard to find, and they're especially hard to find in really good condition. So I consider finding this beauty a score. Uh, it is uh, a rayon. It's not a crepe texture, but uh, the darts on it are wonderful. But the best part is this V which goes down towards the belly button and the draping. Very Dorothy L'Amour, but in the front versus the side. And um, a great sleeve detail. And Mike paired it with this faux cameo, which is glass, pressed glass. And um, 
looks like a gold frame, but it isn't. It's a really nice piece of costume jewelry. The rest are the latter part of the 20th century. So I'm not going to do it chronologically. I'll just do it from the rack. This fun and very youthful, it's a, a dress that is a pique fabric, crisscross back, almost like an apron front, and uh, 19, late 60s, early 70s, very bohemian. Um, something I probably would have worn in high school, so that dates me. And then we have, let's see, what do we have? We have this denim patchwork skirt. It's a Levi's pant that someone very cleverly put different distressed denim uh, to fill in the V part. And then there's, I think this is a signature applique on the bottom, but I have no idea who that is. And this is a good human size. It's not itsy bitsy teeny weeny like for a child or a teenager. Now, who doesn't love Missoni? This piece I liked, it's, it's a little bright. <laughs> I mean, the yellow kind of pops, but it's a, a sheath, a straight dress with its matching cardigan. And I can tell you that this piece has never been worn. It is a rayon fabric and um, they have a heritage look that they've continued to this day. I love the colors in this. And then we have this beautiful lace Christian Lacroix blouse. Now, this more than likely was a piece that went over an evening dress, but this is exactly how I found it. And uh, I love it because it's so diverse. I mean, you wear a bandeau underneath it or a camisole underneath it. You can dress it up or dress it down. And what's nice, too, is the very bottom uh, hem is a metallic lace. And it, it is very reminiscent of some of the lace that I have in my collection. So, of course, he uses some of the best quality material. And this cut, it's a raglan sleeve. So there's plenty of room in the shoulders. Um, it's, it's a really beautiful design, very simple. And speaking of beautiful design and simple, this silk crepe, it's double ply, ruffle neck. It's a wrap um, blouse. And the ruffle extends not only in the neckline, but the armholes and also the hem. And it's Valentino. So uh, something that you can buy and wear probably forever if you're able to maintain your weight. And uh, it's in excellent condition. I don't think it's ever been worn. And this lovely pieced together lace blouse, it's not um, cotton lace. It's a, a, a synthetic lace. 1980s, made to look like the Victorian era with the high neck. And it's a good size. And Mike paired it with this beautiful pendant necklace that has a topaz feeling to it. Looks great. Love it. And I have to tell you that if you look on our website and see what this photograph of this hanging, it doesn't do anything, but this is a beautiful Jean -Jean, uh, Chanel blouse with uh, extreme puffy sleeves. The Chanel um, logo is on the cuff, and uh, I guess billowy would be a better word to describe the sleeves, but then to have this uh, neck detail, this scarf kind of neck detail, front and back. The color on this is magnificent. So happy to have this in our collection. And last but not least, who doesn't want a cashmere Chanel sweater? It's a pullover and it has five buttons that are, you know, this plaid fabric. This doesn't look like it's ever been worn either. And um, the colors are just beautiful. It can be mixed and matched with, 
with a lot of different things. So it's a quiet elegance. So we are working on some pretty exciting upcoming episodes. Uh, a couple with not just me, but a um, very special guest. And I'm going to tease you with that and not give you more information until I know that that person is back in the States and can actually do it. But uh, I want to remind you that we've just started to accept Klarna. So those of you that have fallen in love with something that's just a little bit out of your budget, if you want to do a layaway for four months without interest, Klarna is the way to go. Uh, and uh, we have uh, an Instagram account which uh, shows a lot of the pieces that we are limited in time in doing these YouTube episodes. But um, I wanted to make this episode one that was a variation of things and also one that might motivate you to go to the website to possibly shop. So uh, next episode we'll do one that's more informational and more in-depth. But um, please know that we appreciate your uh, interest and if you like this episode absolutely give us a thumbs up and if you haven't subscribed to it yet we'd love it if you did and uh, happy to say that um, I just I read all the comments and I am so very grateful for all of the love that you've been pouring my way in my healing process and I'm doing great and a lot of it has to do with the positivity that you're sending my way so thank you so I look forward to seeing you next time and uh, in the meantime be safe be well take care thank you mm -hmm.